All right, welcome to another live Unreal Engine Blueprints tutorial. This is Askadev, and today we're going to be implementing a 2D enemy for our platformer game. My name is Kevin. We're doing live tutorials a couple times a week lately. And like I said, today we're going to be implementing an enemy. Should be a lot of fun. We have a lot to do. Uh, just quick background, I currently work as a senior principal tech artist at Riot Games in R&D. I get to do a lot of really cool stuff at work. There's a lot of really cool stuff I don't get to do, so this is a chance to uh, basically maybe help you all out, answer questions along the way, as well as learn a whole bunch of new stuff as well. So as I mentioned, we have a ton to do. We're going to be creating a character from scratch. We're going to be setting up their blueprints, getting them to spawn. Uh, stretch goals will be... Uh, I don't even know if it's stretch goal. I think we'll be able to get it done. It would be great to get their behavior tree, a, a very simple behavior tree set up, as well as uh, super stretch goals of getting some animation done and adding some abilities and all that stuff all in an hour. So if that sounds exciting, uh, we better get rolling. Also, I am running on um, four hours of sleep, which is awesome. So if anything, could go wrong it probably will and that's all right so first in order to create an enemy we need an enemy to work with and so today i am proud to or happy or stoked whatever you want to say to introduce you to three-headed poison dude all right three-headed poison dude is um just a concept and what we're going to what we're doing is we're using these concepts to uh, prove out gameplay and design and all those kinds of things without having to create all the models and everything like that now, this is what we're going to be creating in Engine today. So let's go ahead and get started. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually kill Photoshop because it was crushing our stream last time. That is a surprise for later. So let's get going. Panda, Lucian, thanks for hanging out last night. Thanks for, uh, thanks for hopping in the stream. I'm hoping yellow means hello and not that the stream is coming through yellow. Okay, so in order to get going, there's a couple things that we need. First, we are, let's take a step back. All right, in order to implement a 2D enemy, what we need is we need to create its blueprint, its character pawn. Uh, we need to be able to potentially give it some AI and all those kinds of things, but we need a folder to work in. So I believe, I may have even already created one. So under our assets folder, we have a three head poison character folder. Um, now I'm using very non discrete names. I haven't named this character. Um, poison's probably not good. We should call this um, three head Paul or something like that. Um, because if you start naming things, what they're going to do, then you can't use them for other things and it gets, 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 gets confusing. So in all, for into all intents and purposes, this should just be, uh, let's just call this three, three HP. And then it's not specific. Okay. And what we need to do is we need to import some artwork. So let's create a couple folders. Uh, we need a texture folder and in here, let's just import our Uh, I'm going to remember what it's called in a second, our concept art. So we're going to in import our concept art. We have our enemies, we have our 3H poison. These are all, these are all the parts that we're going to use later. So let's just see if this will work. Okay. You know what? We are actually going to possibly re-export that. Oh no, we're good. Okay, this is totally gonna work. Okay, now for us to be able to use this as a sprite, I'm just going to shortcut this, right click and apply uh, paper 2D settings. So we now have our texture in game. This gives us a visual to work with as we're setting up our pawn. Let me just double check our chats and see how everybody's rolling. Okay, cool. So. We now have a visual to work with, which is great. So let's go to the next step. We need to convert this texture to a sprite. And we're going to go up to Sprite Actions, and I'm going to create a sprite with that. And then I'm going to go one more step further, 
and I am going to create a flipbook. And you're thinking, why are you creating a flipbook when it doesn't actually move? And the reason is because I just, I'm using this as a stand-in. We'll put in animations later and uh, it's just easy enough to use a single frame as my stand-in. So here's a new folder. We can call this our anim folder. I'm trying to stay organized as we go. And so our 3HP idle is gonna go in the anim folder. Okay, so now we have a flipbook to use in the new pawn we're setting up. Now, how do we create a pawn? Well, fortunately, we have already created characters before for our platformer. And what we are going to do is we're going to use inheritance from our classes. So let me go up and show you what this looks like. So every character in our game is a paper character. And we have a default set of things that happen with our paper character. And in this case, um, it seems like our default is we have death. And that's pretty much it. And then there's a couple components. They have health components and things like that. Now, what's important to note is from this paper character, we've actually created two children. We've created a hero and we've created an enemy. And the reason we've done that is because we may not be applying the same things to the hero as we do for the enemy. And so what we're going to do is the blueprint that I want to create for the pawn for this character is going to inherit from the enemy blueprint that we created and it is right here. Wait, hold on a second. That is not right there. It is right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my blueprint to the enemy base. And this just means that this is what I want all of my 2D enemies to inherit from. If you are not familiar with classes, blueprints and class inheritance, uh, there's a video in the video sections on understanding um, classes. But if I was going to explain it very quickly, imagine, you know how in, um, in your science classes, you had uh, the animal classifications, genus, species, etc. And the cool thing is if you knew it was, you know, a, um, a mammal, you knew it shared certain traits. Well, in this case, that's what we're doing. We're defining classes. So everything by default is animal, for example, in this case, a paper 2D character. And then we have another class that is enemies and we have another class that is heroes. And our enemies share certain traits and our heroes share certain traits and we're just reusing that. So I'm going to right click on my 2D enemy blueprint and I'm going to create a child blueprint, blueprint class. And I'm going to call this BP enemy 3 HP. And sure, we'll put in child just for clarity and we're going to put that in our 3HP folder. I'm trying a new thing with asset organization for this project. So let's move this here. Okay, so let's take a look at our 3HP pawn and see what we got for free. And by free, what I mean is because we're leveraging the inheritance and the class inheritance. Well, we got a big, we, we got a big scary firehead. Why do we have a big scary firehead? Well, the reason is because our base class, if you look at the sprite for it, has something filled in over here in our source flipbook. That's okay, we can override that. Generally speaking, if we wanted to work cleanly, what I would do is I would go back to this base class and I would pick this sprite and I would just set this to nothing. Or let's see here, let's go clear. We'll clear these. And then when I compile and save this, what's going to happen is when we go back to our three HP character, you can see that there's nothing here. So now it's blank for us to fill in. It's just cleaner. So when I open up a new enemy, I can fill in the stuff that I want to uh, for the visuals because those are definitely going to change per enemy, for example. So here we go. Uh, let's do Let's make use of that flipbook that we just created. So for here's our 3 HP idle and we have our character presto just like that. Now let's do a couple things. First off this in order to get this to work properly um, we're going to want the character's feet 
to be at the base of the collision capsule. This is the collision capsule for our character. As you can see, it is not properly sized for this character, but that's okay, because we're gonna make some adjustments. So let's pop this up. Now, if you remember, there's a little bit of a scale issue that's going on here. Um, and so as a sanity check, we should throw in another idol just to look. So let's take a look at our hero idol. Watch what the size difference is here. She's tiny compared to that thing. So I think, yeah, that is a beefy three-headed P. Uh, so let's, um, we'll bring back our three HP idle, but let's do some sizing. Now, we're gonna do the sizing in two steps. I'm gonna make the size changes here in, in engine, and we're gonna eventually propagate those back to our propagate those back to our um, source art, the exported files, because what's happening is, to be explicit, we exported this file at 1K, and every other character in our game is 256 by 256. So um, that's a beefcake of a, it's a beefcake of a 3HP. So let's drop this in here. This is going to be their shadow. Uh, it's, we're, we're still working on shadow stuff, so for now, we're just going to, this is not going to deter us from getting our stuff going. So, anyways, we have a visual setup for our enemy now. I'm not going to worry about any other defaults for right now. What I'm going to try to do is just take the next step. Can we get this to spawn? Oh, but before we do that, let's just take a look at a couple things. What do we get for free? We got our begin plays, our overlaps, our ticks. We can't see anything in here, but there's a bunch of other things that we get for free. Uh, character movements, health components, etc. Just because we're leveraging the uh, inheritance structure of blueprints. So let's go back to our level and let's do a couple things. Let's see if we can make this character spawn now. So we, we have our art, we brought it in the engine, we set it up, now we've created our pawn now, the next logical step, can we get it to spawn? Seems, seems like a thing we'd want to do. So we're going to, let's duplicate this spawn point, undo. And we're going to have this dude spawn right here. And the way our spawners are set up, uh, and we could probably do a tutorial on, on how these spawners are set up at some point, but Basically, the way these are set up is they take a argument, which is number of enemies to spawn. Oh, but we can't specify the type of enemy. Ooh, that seems weird. I don't know if I believe that. Let's double check. So when we spawn our enemy, Timer, character invalidate. We're just looking to figure out what we're going to spawn. That's adding the health components. Oh, it's hard coded. Look at this. Okay, so this spawner can only spawn one kind of enemy. We don't want that. So we're also going to be making some changes. So right now, basically what happens is the spawner starts and effectively what it does is it figure out how many it's supposed to spawn and then it starts a timer and every so often it spawns one of them until it reaches the max, okay? And right here, as it gets down, it's it chooses what to spawn. Well, in this case, I, we don't wanna spawn uh, just a BP firehead, so let's promote this to a variable, okay? And we're gonna call this enemy, enemy class to spawn. So it's super clear what it is. Let's compile that, make sure that didn't break anything in our spawner, it did not. The default you'll notice is firehead. All right, now, once again, we can choose to clear this out because it's you know, default, or we can just keep firehead as the default. And for now, we'll just keep firehead as the default. So when we go back to our level now, theoretically speaking, and let's just do a quick save all, just in case we get one of those crashes. Okay, and now we should, oh, we actually need to do one other thing. 
we need to change the settings on our variable to be instance, editable, and expose on spawn. That way we can actually get the information that we need. So we're gonna come back and take a look and see if we have a class listed in our blueprint now. So in the level, we can actually choose what we're spawning at what spawn point. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to drop in here and we're going to try the three. We're going to choose the BP three HP child. Okay. Moment of truth. Uh, let's see if anything shows up. So we'll press play and then we'll run over here. Holy smokes. He's there. And he's huge. <laughs> it's a dude. Three HP is beefy. Okay, but but we're doing okay. We're doing okay. So let's let's do let's do this. Um, I want to do a couple things. Let's delete. You know what? Let's change this just for ease of debug because I want to be able to see what's happening. I'm going to delete this spawn point, and we are just going to edit this spawn point. And we're going to make it the three H uh, three headed. Okay, so now we should only have one, but we don't. Where do you go? Okay, I'm gonna try that again. Oh, 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 there's a radius thing. Interesting. For some reason, that broke our spawning. And I'm not, oh, okay, hold on, let's try something. Let's undo. Can we undo that? Team ID. If we press play again, does it work again? Oh, we are definitely gonna have to figure that out. And interestingly enough, they're both shooting at me. I have an invisible person and a visible person shooting at me. That's great. Okay, but for some reason that is spawning. Let's see if we can make this guy a three HP. Three HP. Do we have two of them now? Okay, that's that one. I cannot walk through it either. But I can jump over it. Oh, there's something weird about that spawn point. If I set it to 3 HP. I wonder if it's a collision issue. Because this spawn point is supposed to be smart enough to figure out if it can spawn. Oh, wait a minute. I wonder. Let's try this. There's one, two. Nope. Don't know what's going on there. We'll sort that out later. So for now, let's just change that back to the um, the head, because that is not part of the tutorial. So here we go. Firehead. And then what I want to do is double check that we're doing all right. Okay, so we have our 3 HP and we have our firehead. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to, you'll notice that our 3 HP one is super big, we'll, we'll fix that. But also, they're attacking. Like, why, I, I, we didn't even set up attacking. The reason they're attacking is because once again, because we inherited from our base enemy, apparently our base enemy has some settings in it that we don't want. So, because we're going to be changing the attack is part of this tutorial. So in general, let's go back and let's do this. Let's figure out in our character, probably in our class defaults, we've got, oh, I know what's happening. I think what is happening is when we spawn our characters in our spawners, 
reinitialize ability system. Somewhere we are telling it to use this behavior tree. And this was the behavior tree we had set up for our um, firehead character. So let's see where this is being used. Track this down. So in our reference viewer, that's in the AI controller. That makes sense. I don't know why all those are being used there, but let's, that's okay. Then we'll go over here. This is being referenced in 2D enemy base. And it's also being referenced in our AI spawner. So we just need to find where this AI controller is being used in both of those. So let's take a look at enemy base. That's the spawn point. And let's search for controller maybe. Hmm. ZPH. All right, maybe it's just a variable in here. We'll have to find that. All right, so it looks like I don't see it in the spawner. So let's check the base. Uh, nope. Uh, AI. Get the AI controller. All right. Here it is. So by default, our 2D enemy base is using this AI controller. If we kill this, what we can do then, this will just now get the generic one. Let's compile that. When we go in now and we play, the enemy should not be shooting anymore. It does not. Okay. Now what we could do to confirm, hey, Storm Run Gaming, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. So. Now to confirm, or now to give our character a, a double check that that is actually working, what we're going to do is in our 3HP character, which is here, we're going to set the AI controller to be that default. And then we're gonna build our own behavior tree. AI, I don't see it there. Why don't I see that there? Class defaults, AI controller, AI controller class. That's interesting. Class defaults. AI, we should be able to see the AI controller here. AI, here it is, AI controller class. All right, and we're going to pick the ZPH stands for the name of this project, um, which is just Xerophene right now. So I'm working on, we're working on titles and names and all that stuff. So now that we have the default controller in, you'll notice that the enemy attacks. Okay, so there's two ways that we can make this enemy have its own actually there's way more than two ways but the goal now do you know how to get a single value out of an array for each loop yes storm run gaming i do if you get a a reference to the array and give it an index you can get the one that you want okay um so what we want to do is what we want is we want to now set up our character to have its own ability and what we want is we want a poison bomb. So first off, like mission accomplished in the tutorial so far, we've taken our 2D concept art, we've gotten it to spawn, we've created a blueprint, a pawn, we've, get in it, we've got a default AI controller, it is spawning in game, it's huge, which we can actually do a quick fix right now. Um, here in our viewport, let's uh, bring this down in size a fair bit. OK, 
Okay. Same thing here. Even though we're not really using the shadows yet. And then let's take our collision capsule and shrink it down in height. And we'll reposition this to be inside of it. Okay, so that should hopefully help with our scale. It's better. It's still pretty big. I mean, it's still pretty big. Let's just, let's go a lot further. Let's take our collision capsule, shrink it up. Make it skinnier. Position that down. Position this up. Shrink down our shadows. We should make these. We're going to have auto set shadows one day. Uh, we've got a bunch of tech to figure out, but now let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so now we can run. Okay, that's, that's, that's a much more reasonable size for a non-boss level enemy, right? Uh, we can jump over it. It's pretty good. Okay, so now we've done it. We've got our 2D character enemy in-game. It's actually working and doing things, but it doesn't feel alive yet, and it also isn't unique yet. So let's make it... How much time do we have? We have 30 minutes. My vote is let's make... Let's, let's create a new ability for this enemy that allows it to throw poison bombs and it should be pretty relatively straightforward because we're just going to reuse a bunch of the abilities that we have already so let's take a look at that um, so abilities we have a weapon attack base now so what's happening right now just so you're aware is the weapon attack base ability the ability starts it gets activated uh, because by default, all the characters have a weapon attack base ability. Um, it comes in here, and then basically from that, it basically says, hey, I'm attacking. And then from there, it goes through and it figures out, do we have targets? And if we do, we are spawning a projectile. And this is where, where the key of it is. This spawns our projectile base. So then the projectile base is where all the work happens. So in our projectile base, if we take a look at that, when it starts, it basically gets a bunch of information set up. And then depending on a bunch of random stuff, it will basically set it to be a homing projectile or not. And then if it's not, uh, obviously, it, and then it gives it an initial velocity and it sets up some VFX and things like that. And the VFX that it sets up are the Niagara Space Projectile Trail. Oh my goodness, we're going to be doing VFX today too. We got a lot of work to do. Okay, so that's the way this works. Um, should be cool. Let's see if we can't override this. So first, what we need to do... Uh, so the first thing that we're, we're going to do is we're going to... First off, does anybody have any questions so far as far as implementing the pawn, getting it in-game, setting it up, getting it to spawn? Okay, cool. Well, what we're going to do is right now when our enemies spawn they spawn okay great they spawn with a behavior tree and the behavior tree they're spawning with is this base attack task and wait in this basic attack task in our behavior tree whenever it receives this it basically activates the primary attack for the character okay and what we want to do is one thing we could do is we could give this character a different primary attack. Right now, this character's primary attack, and actually this will be cool, we can double check this. If we come up to the character and we turn on our debug, by pressing the, uh, whatchamacallit, it is the apostrophe key, we can see 
a lot of information about the state of this AI. Okay, and one of the things that we can see is the abilities. Interestingly enough, it doesn't have any abilities. Which is weird. It is definitely doing weight. Okay. Let's see if we can figure out how we're actually giving this character its abilities. Um, so if we go to our 3 HP, we're going to go to our enemy base. And we're going to be taking a look to see if we're assigning abilities in here. Yes, we're giving it a death and we're giving it a weapon attack. Okay, this is why we don't want to do this this way. All right, let us let me talk about why we're doing this. Uh, well, we may not be that far off. Um, so the ability that we're giving this character is the weapon attack base. Well, what we want to do is we want to be able to specify per character what their primary attack is. So what I want to do is I want to promote this to a variable, okay? And I'm going to call this uh, primary uh, primary attack ability ability. Now, as I mentioned, there are many ways to do this, and we could do it like this. Another way we could do it is uh, more like kind of like how Lyra is set up, where there's a data asset that has all the abilities for the character. And when they get spawned in, they look at that data asset and it assigns all of those abilities to that character. But we're trying to keep this simple uh, and just working with what we have and the hour we have. So, Storm Run, thank you for hanging out. That's awesome. Um, if you want, uh, you know, we have the Discord server. Uh, you're welcome to hop in any of, any of the other stuff to ask for help when you're stuck on and we'll we'll totally we'll totally chime in Okay, but now we have our primary attack ability. This is uh, a pawn We are going to make this instance edible and expose on on spawn. Let's compile and save this So now we can do it our default is weapon base, which is cool and then what we want to do is for our Spawner where's our spawner? Here's our spawner. When we spawn the actor, let's do this. We're gonna spawn actor from class and the class that we're going to spawn is gonna be enemy base. All right, and when I do that, you can see it gives me this, this checkbox to fill in the primary attack ability and that's what we're going to override so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly reconnect all this stuff in and trick the system and we're going to plug in the class to spawn oh you know what we need to set this to be uh, 2d enemy base class reference change it and that, that actually should take care of that problem. Warning. Non-default no longer exists. What? Okay, hold on. Let's try this again. Spawn actor from class. We'll do it this way. Connecting all of this stuff in. By the way, I'm using the control key to drag these these uh, noodles so that I don't have to hunt for where they came from. Okay, can we compile this now? Compile no errors, no issues. Okay, so what we want to do is we've got we've got our enemy now in our spawn points. What we want to do is let's set it up so our spawn point can not only specify the enemy, but um, Eh, I'm sort of on the fence on this. 
For now, because of the purpose of the demo, we'll just go ahead and do it right here. But ideally, it's weird for me that the spawn point is giving the enemy... So let me be clear on this. It's weird to me that the spawn point is giving the enemy its abilities. I feel like the enemy should just give itself its own abilities. Um, and we may go back and fix that. Eh. Should we fix that right now? Primary attack ability. Actually, I think we don't have to fix it. I think actually the primary attack ability may be here for us. It is. It's already here. We don't even need to do that. Okay, never mind. So what we're going to do, here's our weapon attack base. Okay, so here's where we're going to override it. We're going to call this, we're going to create a new ability now by duplicating. Uh, do we want to duplicate weapon attack base? No, let's inherit from weapon attack base like we want to because we want to be clean about this. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a child blueprint. And this is going to be the three uh, HP attack, primary attack, primary attack. Okay, and when we do that, we're going to have to do some work to override some stuff because the original ability was not set up to be able to be modular. Um, so let's go back to the original ability, which is here. And what we want is we want to be able to change the projectile that we're spawning. So let's promote this to a variable. Okay, and this is going to be the projectile to spawn. Why is that red now? Target actor. Target actor no longer exists. Where'd it go? Oh, because our class is wrong. Dog nabbit, we did it again. Uh, let's undo. This is a B projectile base. So we need to make sure that when we make our variable, let's make our variable. This is going to be projectile, projectile to spawn. We need to make sure that we set this to a projectile base class reference. And then we can plug this in to our class here and it won't break our spawning. And we can make that We'll expose instance editable, all the good stuff. All right, let's save that. So now we're now we can choose our projectile. Okay, so when we go back to our three HP primary attack, we should be able to see um, our projectile to spawn. So here's our projectile to spawn. Right now it's spawning the base one. Let's make a new one. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, once again, I'm going to create a child in this case because there I don't have a reason yet for my projectiles to all be different so let's create a child and this is going to be we're going to call this um, blueprint this is going to be poison poison bomb for example okay and then in here let's make some changes and what we're going to change is well, there's going to be a couple things. First off, can we change what we want? First off, this thing should not be a homing projectile. So is that exposed for us? If not, we need to go back to our base class and expose it. It does not look like it is. So let's go back to our base class. Clicking the little edit button will take us there faster. And spawn attached event graph. Here we go. Is a homing projectile or not? is set somewhere up here. Although I don't see this variable. Ah, it's because it's not a variable yet. 
we need to promote this to a variable. We're doing lots of promoting of variables here. Okay, so let's promote this to a variable. Move this up and we are going to connect this into both of these. Oh, wait a second. Let's make sure we're doing this right. If the target actor is valid, we set it to a homing projectile. Otherwise, okay, this is not the right thing. Um, this is two different homing things. This is checking to see if it is a valid actor then it should be homing, but we need another test too. We need to know if the target actor is valid and we want it to be homing, but I don't want it to be confused with this. So uh, let's call this, rather than calling this is a ho homing projectile, we'll make this be um, uh, spot. Uh, we want the projectile home, should, should home be auto find target. No, auto homing. Sure, let's try that. Okay, so if this is true, we're gonna expose this on spawn. Okay, so if the target is valid and it is an auto homing projectile, which we're gonna default to true, Okay, then we would go through and do this. Otherwise, it should just continue as if it wasn't a homing projectile. So this should allow us to make our 3 HP um, projectile not be homing. So we go to our class defaults and we look for, did we compile and save that? No, we did not. Compile and save, let's go back. Class defaults. Make this a homing projectile. And we're gonna uncheck that box. Okay, so now we have our new homing, our, our new bomb. What we need to do is we need to see if we can get it to work. So to do that, rather than spawning projectile base, we're gonna spawn the poison bomb instead. Okay, and then what we wanna do is, is this, 3 HP primary attack being used. Well, let's just double check if we do a reference viewer on this. Did we actually plug it in? We did not. So we need to go to our 3 VP child and rather than attack base, we want our 3 HP primary attack here. So all that done, theoretically, That sure does look like that projectile is still homing to me. What do you all think? I think so. So let's do some debugging. Um, but we need to make sure that the projectile we're spawning is the one we think we are spawning. So in our three primary attack, we're spawning this poison bomb. This poison bomb has a mesh and it should have a Niagara system that gets attached to it. Let's see, where does that happen? And is it part of this? Here's our projectile. Here's our VFX trails with colors. Okay, so in our base, we set up our VFX trails. Here's our mesh. And here's where we set our colors. Okay, and it's only, it's just basically being set by our team colors. I don't know if I like that, but. Team color. Okay, so that means though, Theoretically, do we have access to team color here? Yeah, we can make this bright green. Let's go back to projectile base. This is hard setting it. Here's what we're going to do. 
we are going to skip this. We're not going to set our team color for enemies. So now, whoa, did not like that. Why didn't it like that? Oh, because that's not valid. So let's just take this team color and feed it in instead. You know what, I don't like that. I think that's confusing. I think when I look back at this, I'm gonna be terribly confused by this. So rather than team color, let's duplicate this and call this um, projectile trail color. And we are going to feed this into here. And we're going to get rid of team color altogether. And then we are going to compile this and we'll make the default something that we wouldn't use by default. Let's just make it a yellow so we know what the defaults are for enemies. And then let's make sure that's instance editable and expose on swap. Okay, and then let's go back to our poison bomb and let's set our tail our, our trail color to the bright green, which we've got. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if we can also make it glow. Let's go 10 on the green. Okay, cool. So now when we play. Do we see green projectiles? We don't see any projectiles. We're getting hit, but we don't see it. So something's up. We are broken. Oh, well. First off, we were setting the wrong thing. We don't even need team color to be exposed. Okay, um, time before explosions there, gameplay, etc. tick, all that looks good. Okay, we broke our projectiles. If we go to F1, you can see them coming. You can see, like in wireframe, you can see the projectile coming towards us, but we just can't see it for some reason. So we need to see what we broke in our projectiles. So let's do some quick debugging here. Um, and what we're going to do is in our event graph on the base, let's just put in a breakpoint on begin play. Hold up. Why aren't we hitting that breakpoint? This is projectile base. This is projectile base. Begin play. Did I not have a breakpoint on them? There we go. Okay, so stepping through this, um, we're setting our stuff, we're casting into a character, ignoring the moves, uh, checking to see if the target actor is valid. Okay, and in this case, it's the hero pawn. Ah, Black Panna, good. Okay, so this is great. Um, we are doing basically active debugging. So here's what happens. Uh, as your game's playing, what you can do is you can tell Unreal Engine, I don't understand what's going on. I would like to go step by step through my blueprints to see what's happening. And so what you do is you tell Unreal, I wanna start here. This is where I want you to break the gameplay and stop and let me start to go step by step. So in this case, I set a breakpoint on the begin play for the projectile base. And now what I'm doing is I'm stepping through each of my noodles, each of my execution pins to see where it's going and what it's doing. So in this particular case, every time I press F10 now, what's going to happen is it's going to go to the next thing. So in this case, if I press F10, so the target actor is valid. Auto homing, if I move over this, is true. Why is auto homing true? It should not be true. Then we're going to set the target and we're going to set it's a homing projectile. We're going to set the magnitude and acceleration. We're checking to see if the character is dead or dying. We're going to set the velocity. Let's set up our trail colors. So I'm going to step into this. That's an F11. Then we're going to spawn our system. We're going to set the um, Niagara system to spawn and then we're going to find the team 
and then if the team doesn't if it doesn't have a team it is checking to see if the Niagara system is valid and if it is it is going to spawn a Niagara or it's going to set the Niagara variable for the trail color to be our projectile trail color which in this case is ah you see the problem here look this is why this is why debugging rules look at this we have look at our colors red green blue alpha dude the alpha is zero I still use Prince Black Panda. I still use Prince as well. So our alpha is zero. So that's our problem. So let's go back to our projectile bomb. And in our um, class defaults for our trail color, we need to set our alpha to one. Okay. And I'm hoping that is all it is. Oh, we don't need the breakpoint anymore. So we can F9 that. Nope, that's not all it is. There's definitely something else going on. Hmm. So here we go again. Debug. Step into, we're going to ignore actors. It's gonna go through all the same steps. Nothing's changed. We're not dead or dying. We're gonna set up our trail colors. We're going to set our team, etc. Let's look at our trail color. Wait, why is our trip? Oh, we're spawning the wrong particle. Okay, so let me show you what's happening. Let's go back to projectile base. Okay, and if we look at our class defaults and we look at our projectile trail, for hold on a second, it's not projectile base, it's the You know what, let's make our base projectile trail of um, yellow. Make sure that that alpha. Yeah, it's it's not spawning. It's not spawning the, the projectile we think it is, but we're closer. So now we should see a yellow projectile. There it is, a very yellow projectile. Okay, which means that we're almost there. Okay, what's happening is we are spawning a projectile, but we're not spawning the bomb. We're spawning the default one. So we need to figure out why that is. So let's go back up the chain a little bit and let's take a look at our attack. So um, this is our three HP primary attack. I wanna know if we're actually activating this ability. So I'm going to use a print string, just like Black Panda likes to use, 3HP. Does it ever print 3HP? No, it's not. It is not using this ability. So our enemy is using the wrong ability. So what we need to do is figure out why. Um, I thought that this primary attack ability was what was being used. So let's go back up to our 2D enemy base and let's see, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna put a debug in here, okay? What's going to happen is when we initialize our character, we're going to come in and we're going to step through and see what it thinks. Okay, so uh, that was nothing. It skipped it, it skipped it. So far we're skipping. Oh, I skipped it entirely. Is it even getting here? Okay, so here's our spawn. And the clap. Whoa. It's not spawning that. The actor we're spawning here is Firehead, okay? And the actor we're spawning here is Firehead again. Oh, this is a problem. So we have a problem in our blueprint right now. Um, we are spawning. We are, no, 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 this, this is all old. 
Uh, you, actually, we're we're basically we're skipping all of this intentionally because well, there's there's a bunch of things wrong here. Uh, different. That's going to be a different thing. But basically, what looks like is happening is our spawn timer is still running. Um, and what, as a result of it, it's spawning multiple enemies. Like multiple enemies. Spawn point one. Okay, let's try that. And then also what this means also is that this is not where our abilities are coming from. So this is never going to work because as to, to Black Panda's point, we're skipping an execution pin down here. So we're not setting that. Where is it? Uh, in our trigger spawn, we are not doing any of this here. So this is not where our abilities are getting set. Okay. So let's just double check. I want to see if we're hitting this multiple times still. All right. So there's the first one. Okay. We have two. Okay. So that fixed the spawn point issue. Now let's figure out why our character does not is not you basically what's happening is the our character is using the default attack okay and the default attack find references Do we, are we even coming in here? Because if we're not coming in here, this is not where we're assigning our abilities. It's gotta be done somewhere else and we will go hunt that down. But this is all part of setting up a character. Okay, so we did hit this. Where is this? That's the spawn point. Okay, so we're adding the ability system component to, it does not like that. Um, it's like it's not getting to here. Do we ever even hit this? Let's try this again. Okay, we definitely are adding the ability system component to our enemies. What? Clearly, we're here, and the target in this case is the ability system component. What is this? Weapon base attack, okay. So that makes sense because the fire head we haven't changed. Weapon base attack. Ooh, something sneaky's going on because somehow that's not being said oh wait is it using this it might be using this um let's test it let's test it let's do this let's do if we change this to poison does everything come back green uh no no no. let's do uh this is gonna be the three hp primary attack if that's if this works then we know where the problem is we can get rid of these breakpoints that looks green doesn't it it's green not only is it green but it's flying off into space okay so we got it oh my goodness <laughs> implementing enemies is fun um okay so to what is happening is we have a little bit of a mix up in our spawning 
uh, in our ability system right now, where we're the abilities that we're granting, um, the way we're granting them is probably not the most efficient or best way to do it. So what's happening is our spawn point is stomping the one that we're setting on our character because this is 2D enemy base. We're giving it the ability here and then our spawn point is potentially trashing that. So let's do this. Let's try something. I don't know if this works in Unreal or not, but let's change this to, let's disconnect the expose on spawn. And then we'll go back to this. This is no longer gonna work. We're going to refresh these nodes to get rid of the red. So we are no longer specifying the ability in the spawn point anymore. So now when we play, does it, okay, so that's green, that's cool. Our two-headed fire dude. Okay, so now the ultimate test would be if we change our 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 three HP to be the default instead of the primary. Do the projectiles go back to the other ones? They do. Okay, so that totally worked. So what was happening was our spawn point was overriding our primary attack ability. Okay. So in this case, what we want is we want our primary attack to be the one that we're creating for the three HP. So let's go back to our three HP here. So this is three HP's primary attack, save. Now, if we look at that, there is, a, now that we've got that running or working, we do have a problem actually. Um, and the problem is our initial projectile speeds. They're pretty nuts. Like the idea is these things should go up into space and come back down, but I don't even think they're ever gonna come back down with these velocities. So let's see if we can fix that real quick and wrap that up. So back here in our class defaults, three HP primary attack. Let's check our primary attack. We don't need this. We'll check our class defaults. This is the projectile we're spawning which is the poison bomb. Now, the velocity that we're getting for our poison bomb is set where? Radius, timer before exploding. Do we actually have the ability to set our initial velocity? No, we do not. So what's happening is we're getting our distance And we're setting the velocity to be some pretty big numbers. Um, and they're, they're in a range. So effectively what's happening is we're doing it based on distance because if you're too close and you send a homing projectile too far it'll basically run circles and never hit it'll never hit your it'll never hit your player or whoever you're targeting is so that's what all this is about and this gets fed in this value is kind of like a a multiplier okay and then our z velocity is basically this multiplied by that so let's say that There's two ways we can do this. We could set the velocity, like as part of our projectile, or if we're homing, we could, if we're not a homing projectile, we could have a different set of velocity ranges. I think I like the idea. Well, let's just keep it contained for right now. So what we need to do is we need to variableize our x so that we can put in some options here so let's move some of this stuff over let's make some room we'll do this real quick i know we're at time i know this demos or this tutorial is going a little bit long but it'll be nice to wrap up to see if we can get a nice arc to our projectile before we wrap up for the day so what i want to do is 
I'm going to promote this to a variable. And I'm also going to promote this was not connected, right? I'm also going to promote this to a variable. So we have new velocity x and z. And then we're going to set these just so I remember what they were connected to. Here. Okay, now we just need a little bit of logic. All right. So by default, let's move these over, make some room. Okay, by default, let's just set these. We're not going to worry about this upper branch. What we're going to do is we're going to set these to the current values by default. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll change them if we happen to be homing. We're going to be making a better way of doing this in the future because there's something about this that feels off. The more of these that we build, we'll get, we, will, we will get clarity on what we think, but here's what we're gonna do. If it's a homing, then we wanna change what we'll do is we'll do straight in as we are, okay? If it's false, oh, actually I'm on the wrong side. Let's do this here. We're gonna keep that. Up here is what we want. Um, and we're gonna back this up one more time because we should just do this by default. Okay, so no matter what, we're setting our default X and Z. All right, and then for the case of if it is, if the character is dead or dying, is false. Okay, that's fair. If it's dead or dying, false, then we're gonna set our velocities. Okay, that's fine. So if, if, it's, if it's not a homing projectile, Let's get a different velocity for x, which let's just say is going to be a random number between, let's just try something smaller. Let's try something like 500 to 500, for example. Okay, and we are going to set that as being our velocity z, and we're going to change these because this means that our projectiles could go through the floor too. But let's just set this like so. And let's set our velocity x as well. And we'll set it to the same thing for now, just to see if we get less of a projectile arc. And once we know this works, we can fine tune it. Okay, cool. So either it is not going where we think it's going, which is a possibility, or 500 is still too much. So let's debug it again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a breakpoint in that blueprint. Um, let's put the breakpoint right here. Yeah, I don't think that thing's coming back down either. Oh, interesting. It's not even hitting this part of our blueprint. Oh, wait. Yeah, it did. Hold on a second. Oh, that's because I shot. What? Projectile base. We're not, we're doing something different here. Let's do this. Okay, here we are. We're in our projectile. It's been fired. And now we're going to do some stuff. Whoa, it ended the ability. Huh. 
How is it ending the ability? Something weird is going on here because it doesn't seem like we're hitting any of these points. So this is could be a timing thing. Okay, our target's valid. Homing projectile is false there. And we are setting our velocity in local space. Why are we doing that? Is dead or dying on the target actor? Am I dying? I didn't know that. I look fine. Two D hero pawn. It thinks I'm dead or dying. How do you figure? Um, I don't think so, people. Let's try this. I just want to see this projectile work. We've got other issues we got to debug. Somehow we're still going. Oh, okay, hold on a second. I see what's happening. It's not because we're going through dead or dying, it's because. This is not a homing projectile. And as a result of it, we were coming up there. So I think what we need to do is we need to connect in here. Let's try that. Okay, now, here we go. So is it auto homing? Should be false. Now we're setting our new velocities. Let's get rid of these breakpoints. Resume. There we go. Okay, so our, our projectiles are spawning. <laughs> They're really slow and they are not following, uh, following gravity and they're super slow. So somehow we have turned off gravity maybe. Did we do that in here? Projectile gravity scale. Interesting. I wonder if it's doing this. Okay, so there's a thing that happens with our projectiles where when they spawn, they we set the gravity scale. Jasper, what's going on? Welcome to the stream. So what's happening is it's possible we're coming in here. So let's just disconnect this real quick. Let's just break the living daylights out of this just to finish our tutorial. What? Well, it hit me. That wasn't very cool. Projectile gravity scale. We should not be doing that. Oh, man. What has happened with this projectile? So Z velocity, let's just change this to be uh, 500 and we'll keep our X like that. And we should only be going vertical now. Okay, good. So all we gotta figure out is why gravity is not working. That should be faster. Um, projectile movement, initial speed, resolution. Ah, look at this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Our default projectile gravity scale is zero. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, so let's do this. Oh, so close. All right, so let's take our projectile movement and let's set our gravity scale. I don't know why it's zero. I'm probably gonna change this. Like this is the messy way to do this right now but we're trying to build a 2D character in an hour. So we're gonna clean some stuff up here in a bit uh, after, but let's just double check this. Nope. 
Because you gotta set it to one. That's why. Let's try this again. There we go. We've got gravity, people. Holy smokes. Okay, but obviously we can definitely increase, we can definitely increase our uh, velocities here. So we want to do, here's what we want to do. Uh, it's always one more thing. That's why learning is fun, man. We, we figure something out and then it's like one more cool thing that we can do. Here's the problem. If we use random numbers between uh, negative 1000 and a thousand for our velocity scale for our projectile. What's going to happen is sometimes it's going to be going a thousand that way. Sometimes it's going to be going a thousand this way, but sometimes it'll be zero and the projectile is just going to fall straight down. But we don't. What we want is we really want there to be a minimum and a maximum. And then we want to be able to change which direction it goes. So in this particular case, let's change this. Let's go from a minimum of a thousand to a max of 5,000. All right. What this is going to do is it's going to make it so that all of our projectiles only shoot to the right, I believe it is. And we'll change our Z to be, let's say 500 to 1000. Just to randomize how, how vertical they go. So what's going to happen is this is going to make it so our projectiles only fire one way. Okay. So they're only firing to the right. And we do not have enough vertical scale on these things. So let's go uh, 1500 to 2000 over here on the Z. Make sure that we're getting those vertical. Okay. Let's go even more. Let's go 3,000 to 5,000. Okay, so that's gonna be our Z, and we're gonna dial back our X. Let's go 3,000, 1,000. And then I'm gonna show you how to flip this around. Okay, so that's now at least shooting upward. Eh, every now and then it's going straight to the right, down. That's a little weird to me. Not gonna lie. Z velocity, new Z velocity. Let's make sure gravity's not causing this. Whoa, gravity is strong. Cause we're definitely we're not shooting anything downward without gravity. So let's let's go even more. Let's go uh, 5,000 to 10,000. And then that should do that. Yeah, something's up with that. Something in our, in our world space. But that's okay, let me finish the thought. So the point is, Right now, this is only going to the right. So then what we can do is what we can do is we can multiply this by, uh, let's take a random, uh, random select, or is it select float? Let's try this, select float. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to choose negative one or one. And where we're going to connect into this is we're going to connect into a random Boolean. So what we're doing is we are clamping our velocity to be just positive right now. All right. And in order to get it to go the other way, because what we don't want is we don't ever want our velocity to be zero because otherwise it's just going to drop straight down in this particular case. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to multiply it by either negative one or one, and that's going to change it. So randomly it'll choose direction. So if we just take now, what is a number? It's almost like using an absolute value. Okay. We're going to multiply the absolute value of our velocity by randomly selected negative one or one, which is going to cause our, our, our projectiles to go left and right, but at a reasonable speed. So, in practice, 
Let's see if we go both ways. All right. Nada so far. So either we are not using our projectiles the way I thought we were. Are we hitting this? I don't know if we're hitting that. We are. So 15, 17, positive one. Positive one. Positive one. What are the chances of it always being positive one? Oh, there we go, negative one. All right, we're gonna get rid of this breakpoint because, yeah, dude, I told you, four hours of sleep, unlucky is something that can happen. So let's do this, print string, and let's print out this float as part of this because I want us to be able to see which way they go and what it's printing. So if we'll go over here, oh, it's doing that thing where it's printing it in the message log only. Where's the output log? Come on. It's launching the output log. That's what it's thinking about. All right, well, while I'm waiting for that to come up, we're getting ready to wrap this up. So. Basically, what we were able to do today, we were able to take our 2D art, pull it in, create a sprite, add it to a pawn, take our pawn, put it in the game, give it some AI, uh, give, it, give it a default behavior tree, uh, get the spawn point to work. It is now spawning in projectiles, which are different colored, ran, ran into a couple bumps there, but we'll be doing some more on that. I'll get that all kind of cleaned up and things like that and moving forward. So what we didn't get to Wow, that is still coming up. What we didn't get to, and what I think will be fun to show you, is let's get some Maya open. I'll show you some teasers for what's coming. Um, in general, we're going to be talking, uh, coming up on Wednesday, we're gonna be talking about hit flashes. So I've got a whole, uh, we got a whole new tutorial on how to create a flip, uh, hit flash component for your characters. The stuff applies to both 2D and 3D. Uh, but we'll be talking about hit flashes, going over all that stuff. And then at the same time, as always, uh, you know, feel free to hop into the Discord and things like that. We're going to be we're going to be streaming these as tutorials now. So if you all have specific or individual questions, until we get to a, a pretty big culmination where we do want to do an actual live Q and A instead, uh, we'll just kind of be doing those in um, in Discord. Also, uh, I do have a Patreon that I'm going to be setting up here in a bit. Um, so quick teaser of some things that are coming because it was just fun to get this going. In one of our previous streams, I had talked about some of the issues with registering our 2D animation using Adobe Animate. I got tired of fighting Adobe Animate. Um, it's not necessarily because of Adobe Animate. It's just I'm not an Adobe. I, I, have, I don't have a lot of experience with Adobe Animate and I need to get a bunch of stuff done. And there's a lot of reasons why I have now taken our character and I've now rigged our 2D character in Maya as a 2D, 3D asset. And then what we'll do is we're going to render these out and um, use those for our sprites. So for example, here's a jump that I was working on uh, last night, entirely too late. But what we can do now is we can take this and we can take this from our register camera, which doesn't look correct here. But when you render a single frame, you'll notice that um, oh, our resolution's wrong. If we set our resolution properly, um, but it basically this camera's locked off so that the the character always renders from the proper setup 
and I can take and I can zero out the jump so that it all happens in place. So we've got we've got our jump. We have um, Panda and Lucian. We were all kind of hanging out last night working. And even after I said I was going to go to bed, I didn't go to bed. And so I created a run. So um, doing far more creative fun work than I'm supposed to be doing at this stage in game dev, but uh, having fun with it. So we got to run a jump and some, th some things like that. And we're going to basically be uh, pulling those into the, the same kind of state machine stuff we're doing. It does not look like our Unreal is coming back just simply because I launched the output log. So we're going to take that as a chance to wrap up again real quick. Um, thanks for hopping in. Jesper, it's good seeing you. Black Panda, um, Lucian, everybody, everybody who's hanging out in the wings. Anybody who's watching this after the fact, thanks for watching. Uh, this is this is a whole series of tutorials we're going to be doing live. Sometimes they go well and sometimes not. Today was, you know, all right. But um, hit flash components coming up on Wednesday. In the future, we're going to be talking about material managing components. We're going to be fixing um, ability systems. We've got a pose asset tutorial coming as well. Keep an eye out for those. Uh, you know how to keep an eye out for things. Just, you know, uh, follow the channel. Uh, for everybody else, if you like what we're doing here, help spread the word. Also, I'll be setting up a Patreon account uh, for anybody who's looking for additional help beyond the tutorials and things like that. My name's Kevin. I hope everybody has a blast, uh, a great rest of your weekend, and I will either see you in Discord or on Wednesday for our Hit Flash tutorial. All right, have a good one, y'all.